In this video, we're going to be talking about the basic structure of a matrix. On each question of your test, you will be presented with a 3x3 three three matrix that is made up of 9 total elements. 8 of them will be visible, and 1 is always missing. To find this missing element, we need to decipher the patterns of logic as they will tell us which answer choice, A through F, best completes the matrix. We can find those logical patterns by taking a look at all of the elements and finding patterns in the way the elements are organized. For the purposes of this video and future problem solving videos, we will be referring to elements as 1 through 9, with 1 always being the top left element and 9 always being the bottom right missing element. Each matrix is defined by at least one logical feature or one logical pattern, but it can contain several logical patterns. In most cases, a logical pattern will consist of three groups of three elements organized in various different ways, such as side to side, or from top to bottom, or even sometimes diagonally. Let's take a look at each of those three orientations. When three groups of three elements are organized from left to right, we call that logic by rows. We would refer to this row as our first row or our top row. This row would be the second row, or the middle row, and then the third row, or the bottom row. When three groups of three elements are organized from top to bottom, we call that logic by columns. We would refer to this column as the first column, or the left column, the second column, or the middle column, and the third column, or the right column. Oftentimes, three groups of three elements can be visualized in a diagonal pattern as well, which is the least intuitive of the three different organizational patterns because in a 3x3 three three matrix, there is only one possible way to see a clear visual diagonal. To see the other three diagonals that exist in this 3x3 three three matrix, we would have to physically move some of the elements around in order to visualize the other diagonals. Once we rearrange the elements as shown, we can see that there are indeed three different diagonals, three groups of three elements present within this matrix. Within each diagonal, there should be shared features. Elements 3, 4, and 8 should share a similar feature, like be the same color or be the same shape, etc. Elements 2, 6, and 7 should also follow that same principle, but they likely have a different thing in common. For example, maybe elements 3, 4, and 8 are all blue, but elements 2, 6, and 7 are all black. Then we have elements 1, 5, and our missing element 9. Remember, element 9 is always missing. We don't know what it is, and we need to figure out what it is. Once we see that our other two diagonals all share some kind of common feature, we can assume that the feature uh, in elements 1 and 5 would also be present in element 9. So let's say that elements 1 and 5 are white. Then we can assume that element 9 is also white and look for white features in our answer choices. This is why we call this organizational pattern a 1, 5, 9 diagonal. This is another way to arrange three groups of three elements into a diagonal pattern. In the last example, we were looking from the top left to the bottom right in elements 1, 5, and 9. Now we see a clear diagonal from the top right to the bottom left in elements 3, 5, and 7. So if you're looking at a matrix and you see similarities between elements 3 and elements 5, you may have a diagonal pattern on your hands. Now I'll show you what it looks like once we have rearranged the elements. Here you can see that again we have three different diagonals made of three different elements. Within each diagonal, all three of those elements will share similarities. For this one, you want to look at elements 1, 6, and 8 to see what similarities they have in common. Maybe they are all square in shape, and then maybe elements 3, 5, and 7 are all circles in shape. If you can prove that elements 1, 6, and 8 have a feature in common, and elements 3, 5, and 7 have a feature in common, then you can reasonably assume that elements 2, 4, and the missing element 9 should have similar features as well. For example, if elements 2 and 4 are circles, then you can reasonably assume that element 9 is also a circle and find your correct answer. This is why we call this organizational pattern the 2, 4, 9 diagonal, because that is the diagonal on which you can find your correct answer.
Sometimes a matrix can be organized in a completely random pattern, meaning there's no row pattern, no column pattern, and no diagonal pattern. Even if you're faced with a randomly organized matrix, there's still a way to solve it. What you need to do is look for those three groups of three elements. Because they're still there, they're just scattered at random. Keep in mind that one of those groups will be missing one of its elements. So really what you'll have is two groups of three and one group of two. So for example, let's say elements one, five, and seven are all squares. That's one group of three elements that share a feature. Then let's say six, four, and eight are all circles. Those are three more elements that share a feature. Those are our two groups of three. So then you would look for a group of two that's missing its third. If elements two and three were both triangles, then you could assume their third missing partner, element nine, should be a triangle as well. That is the easiest way to find the answer when you are given a random matrix. Now let's go over the five different patterns of logic that exist in this matrix. If we look at our rows from left to right, we can see that the format of each of the shapes is the same throughout each row. In the top row, they're all an arrow that has a little bit of a notch in its back. In the second row, it's all triangles. And in the third row, they're all L shapes. So the format of the shape is consistent through each of the rows. Now, if we look at the columns, we can see that the orientation matches throughout each column. All of the elements in the left column are pointing towards the bottom left corner. All of the elements in the middle column point to the bottom right corner. And all of the elements in the right column point to the upper right hand corner. If we take a look at our diagonals, we can see that the outline of the shape is the same throughout each diagonal. In our 159 diagonal, they all have dotted outlines. In elements 2, 6, and 7, they all are single solid outlines. And then in elements 3, 4, and 8, they have double outlines. So again, we have three diagonals, and within each diagonal, there is a similar feature that is present in all of the elements within that diagonal. In our 2, 4, 9 diagonal, the number of shapes is the same. In elements 3, 5, and 7, there are three shapes present. In elements 2, 4, and 9, there are two shapes present. And in elements 1, 6, and 8, there is only one shape present. Finally, all of the frames throughout the matrix are organized in three groups of three, but they are not organized in a neat row, column, or diagonal. They are spread out randomly throughout the matrix. One of the groups of three is present in elements one, six, and eight. All three of those elements have a dotted outlined frame. The next group of three is element three, four, and nine. Those three elements have a solid single outlined frame. The final group of three is elements two, five, and seven, which all have double or very thick outlined frames. Now that you understand the basic structure of a matrix, let's move on to the next section to complete some real matrix practice problems.